uh, we're about to head off on a short monitoring session. Um, the plan is to check the dogs in the boma and do some scanning in the area for any other priority species which might be around. Um, let's see what happens. young ones here which aren't, aren't at mating age yet um, but there are a couple of fully grown adult males which will be fighting for those rights. The reason I use the Koeni track to check the boma. Okay, no problem. Uh, you can proceed. Thanks very much. Bye, Sarah. Okay, so the, the pack we're checking in the boma is called the Umbulunga pack. Uh, it's made up of um, four females from the uh, Sisuze pack um, from Pushui and three males from what used to be called the Beji pack uh, in Filozi. Some of you guys might remember scanning for um, one of them, um, Fire, um, and the other one is Oman. You might also remember him. He used to be the alpha male of the Beji pack. Um, so the Boma they're in at the moment uh, is on Infilozi Game Reserve and the, a Boma is essentially a holding facility um, for wild dogs and other other predators before they're released into the reserve. Um, it's, in this case it's for, this pack is recently bonded so they're being held in the BOMA for a while so they can uh, reinforce their, their new bonds as a pack and also to acclimate to the conditions of Nymphalozi before they're released. Okay so we've we've arrived at the BOMA now um, and there's a number of things we have to we have to check and look for when we when we arrive. Um, the first of which, and one of the most important, is testing the electrics around the boma. Um, and that's just making sure everything's working and running as it should. Um, the fence is electrified to protect the dogs um, inside, um, to make sure that no animals can um, get that close to the boma and get that close to the fence. Um, and then equally for the dogs inside, it's electrified so that they don't um, take any chances trying to dig out or trying to bite through the fence etc. Um, other things we need to look for, obviously we need to check that every dog is still here, still inside the boma. Um, we check for any obvious signs of injury that may have happened in since the last time we checked. Uh, and then we also need to check um, water, water trough levels to make sure they have enough clean drinking water. Okay so there's um, two of the seven dogs, two of the two of the females, uh, Shoko Shoko and Shana are um, doing their thing in the feeding compartment and then the other five are in the main compartment. Playtime! <laughs> let's go, let's have a look at what the others are doing in the main compartment. Okay, so Boma check done. Um, luckily, we were we came down to check because, as you saw from the, the footage earlier, the fence was a bit damaged, but we managed to sort that out. Um, and for the rest of the Boma stuff, the dogs all look good, all accounted for, um, all looking healthy, water levels good. Um, now it's time to head back to camp and see what we can see on the way. Once 
good luck without volunteers. Um, it's, it's certainly more difficult. I have to um, I have to do all the scanning myself, which means I have to stop every time I get out the vehicle. Um, there's no one to scan while I'm driving, which is very, very useful when you're tracking dogs that are on the move um, and you need to keep, keep up with them. So having to stop every couple of minutes to check is not ideal. Um, and then on top of that, there's no one no one on the back to help take photographs of, of animals when you see them. Um, I sit very low in the vehicle and it's quite difficult to get my own photos, especially when I have to drive at the same time. Um, and then furthermore, it's also it's, it's, it's much harder for myself to spot things when I'm sitting as low in the vehicle. And volunteers often, often spot things that I can't see from where I am, behind a bush or around a tree. Um, yeah, so we, we lose all of that when we have no volunteers with us.